Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I'm excited to be with Jonah Richmond, and we're going to be talking about what does empathic marketing mean. Uh, Jonah, great to have you here. Hey, thanks for having me, George. Yeah. So let me go ahead and share with the audience your your uh, background, your bio, and then we'll get into this conversation. So, Jonah helps coaches, healers, and heart-centered educators attract clients and students online. He has been studying online marketing since 2012, and he has led over 100 in-person and online workshops. Jonah is also a trainer in compassionate communication, a modality that em em uh, empathizes um, authentic self-expression uh, self and empathic listening. He combines com uh, compassionate communication with ethical marketing strategies to create a unique style of marketing. Um, and Jonah is also a member of my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group, so I'm grateful for, for his presence in there as well. So, yes. um, and I, I just like to say too, really fast, that yeah. I actually just discovered you, I think, six months ago, maybe even less than six months ago, and um, and I've been loving your program. I've been in it for I think two months now, and as soon as I saw you, I was like, this guy's this guy's feels so aligned with my heart, and um, I've been just just really enjoying the program. So just wanted to to let your listeners know. Appreciate that. it. Yeah, thank you. And thank yeah. you for helping out others in the program too with your, um, sure. with your marketing coaching. So um, uh, let's start with this idea uh, that a lot of people think marketing is about broadcasting. You know, you gotta get visible, get attention, make sure people see your message. So it's all about like this, you know, this, this direction of things, but right. you kind of see it differently. And I'd love for you to share with your, share with yeah, the audience what, what that is. For sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll just share with everyone that I've been, I mean, I've been studying marketing now for, for about 10 years. Um, but it started because it started, I, first I was a massage therapist for a little while and I didn't really like that that much actually, but I, I, I started studying compassionate communication, and this was because I um, I grew up with a lot of anxiety. Like I I was just like born with a lot of social anxiety, uh, particularly. And um, compassionate communication, more than anything else, and some other tools as well, really helped me find a deep sense of self love and um, and just helped me become a really happier, a much happier person. And uh, so one of the things I, I love about that modality is the emphasis on really deeply hearing and understanding the experience of another person and then having that experience. Like there's something really healing about the and therapeutic about the experience of just being really understood. And so as I was studying sales and marketing over the past 10 years, working on growing a business, sharing this, the, that modality that I love, um, I started to, to, to look at it through that lens. And I realized that, co that um, marketing is so much actually about listening. Like we think of marketing, like you said, as just like, we're putting ourselves out there and we're being really loud and we're trying to get attention and we're trying to show everyone how amazing we are. And, and there is an aspect of that, but there's, but a big part of it I found is, is really listening. Like, like I find that, that the best marketing copy and the best educational content out there is, is when you're really letting your people know how well you understand them and how much you've been listening and hearing like, like, these, these are the challenges that I'm hearing you say and that you're having, and these are the, the, the feelings you're having, and this is what you're really wanting to attain. And when you're creating and you're putting yourself out there by in a way that's really just kind of actively letting people know that you hear them, um, that I think is like a huge percentage of really effective marketing. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so seeing it that way has really helped me feel as a more introverted person um enjoy the process so i because i feel like i can do that i don't really like like gloating on myself but right but putting focusing on hearing others is something I that's enjoy. brilliant so, yes yeah. it's it marketing when it's done well 
and authentically is about relationship, right? right. And so in, in any relationship, if we're not uh, listening in a way that they feel heard, um, we're not right. doing a good, good job of listening. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, another idea that, uh, that you talk about is how marketing is not linear, is not linear. And um, tell us what you mean by that and how, how does that show up in, in today's world? Yeah, um, so I mean, so a, a lot of, I think a lot of the ways that marketing is done and taught these days is actually in a very, it, it is what I would see as a linear way. And actually I got this idea from, from Andre Chaperone. He's, uh, he teaches um, uh, email marketing and some, some other styles of marketing as well. And um, so, it, but it's the idea that a lot of common marketing these days is taught in a way where everything happens in, it, it's like you, you try and get people to go from one step to the next. So it's like you, you put out a, an ad and then the ad is trying to get you to click to the next page. And then the page is trying to get you to sign up for the webinar and the webinar is trying to get you to sign up for the for the offer that they're selling. And then the, and then in the offer, they're trying to get you to sign up for a more expensive offer. And, and the whole thing is it's a very linear track. It's like, I want my audience to go through this exact series of steps. Every single step is, is set up in a way that is, that is just trying to get you to take the next step. Um, so, so they use a lot of methods to, to try and create scarcity and pressure and FOMO to get you to, to, Kind of pressure you to take the next step, um, and so as uh, Andre Chaperone calls it, he says that he, he believes that a lot of buyers don't actually like that. I mean, sellers, as marketers, marketers love that because you can kind of measure every step and try and optimize how many people move from one step to the next. But he's like, buyers don't really like that, and that's what feels true to me. That really, what most of us prefer. Is, is what he calls a choose your own adventure approach, um, which is like you, you find ways for people to discover you and then they can, and this is what I like, George, you're a great example of this. Like you, you put out a lot of content and then you can go to your website and there's a lot of, you have a lot of blogs that you've written and there's just a way where you can kind of find your own way to absorb and get to know um, us marketers or whatever it is that we're putting out there, what our, whatever our modality is, when people can find their own way to, to learn about us and about our methods and our theories, then that tends to be the way that they actually want to want to learn and become um, in our, to ultimately become a, a client potentially. Um, and part of that is the, um, I'm kind of blanking on what I was going to say. No, I mean, um, it's perfect. I mean, sales funnels is, is really what, right. what most of us are, 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 are taught when we start learning marketing these days. Yeah. Um, it's been around for, for years. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's thank you for kind of explaining it so well. It's like, okay, here's what happens. Here's what right. trying to pressure people to take the next step, optimize it so that there's more a higher conversion rate to the next step. And, um, and, and all really of these, like, yeah. yeah, one thing I remember what I wanted to say, and then, um, it's like, so there's this, there's this pressure, like, like the marketer, when the marketer thinks that way, usually they're like, they're thinking short term, like how fast can I get them into the sale? And so when you think of more of a choose your own adventure approach, it's like you, you think of it as like people like people can take time. Like you might have someone who discovers you today and they sign up for two years later. And when you think that way, you might have less sales in the short run, but in the long run, you're more likely to build a really sustainable business that people feel good about. I was, I was actually, I've signed up for things that use that kind of method before. And, and for me, I always felt like, even if I enjoyed some of what I was learning, I always felt this little twinge of distrust for them. And there's a way where, where like the, the authentic, like feeling really trust, trusting of who I work with is, is important to me. And I think it's important to a lot of people. And those kind of methods, I feel, push people in the other direction because yeah. there's that, that pressure. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's, it's, 
I could, I was going to say, I'm sorry you had to have that experience, <laughs> but in a way, having had that experience, you really know at a gut feeling what it's like that so many people have gone through and what you're trying to do differently, um, you know, truly, and you have a very strong reason to do it uh, differently. Um, yeah, you know, the thing about the sales funnel stuff and measuring every step, you, you spoke so well about it, is that what's not being measured or observed is the actual mind and heart of the person who's, the, all the people who are, who, are, who are seeing your sales funnel, who are experiencing it. All they can see is the external click or the external right. sign up or the external purchase. They can't see the internal psychology. Um, and so it's like, how many people are we turning off? And, and what, when the other thing you said about how, you know, these linear ways give you short-term results, maybe sometimes, some, many times it doesn't work. People don't tell you that, but sometimes right. they give you short-term results yeah. and they don't tend to build a long-term relationship and a long-term business. And I gave up on the linear marketing in 2013, essentially, and started doing you know, like you said, the choose your own adventure style in 2014 or so. And I can tell you, it really has, my business has only gone up every year and it's gotten easier every year. Um, and so it's, it's, I wouldn't have been able to, it's hard to, to really believe it until you hear other people say, no, it really doesn't work. So I want to be one voice and you as well as say, yeah. yes, uh, you don't have to do it in a linear way. So one of the things you also talk about is the three conditions that are needed for a, a client to say yes to you or a sale to happen. So talk us through this, talk us through those three. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so the three conditions, um, as I see it, that, that people need, especially if we're doing a service-based work where they're, where people are going to hire us to learn from us or, or do coaching with us, um, is safety, trust, and desire. And um, so, so like desire is, is like people kind of miss all, uh, in all of these in the way that they do their marketing. Um, and, uh, and desire is kind of the obvious one. It's like you need to be offering them something that they have a genuine desire for. And some people miss, miss that. It's like you, uh, the people think like, it, it's kind of like the, the idea of, of do they like sell them what they want, like what they desire, and then give them what they need. And some people try and market in a way that's focused more on what they, what they need, but they might not feel a desire for it. So it's helpful to just think of that, like, are people desiring this thing enough for, for me to, to, for them to pay for it? So that's just the first step. Um, but then, so there's, there's trust and safety. And trust is, it is the sense that people get the sense from you that you are able to help them. Like you have, you have the expertise or the background. And this is also something that a lot of people talk about. But what I think people don't talk about that much is the third one, which is safety. Um, and safety is, is like you don't, it doesn't need to be there as much if you're just selling a product but if you're working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, what I find is that a lot of people really want to get a sense that, they, that they're really safe with you, especially if you're a one-on-one -on -one coach or if you're in a group program, if they're in a group program with you that they're facilitating, um, that, that they wanna know that I, I can feel safe with this person. I can, I can share my real fears and my struggles and my pain and, and know that this person is gonna understand me. They're not going to judge me or try and act like the challenge isn't as, isn't as challenging as it is. Like they're gonna, they're gonna lean in and, and offer kind of an empathic way of being. Um, and, uh, and so safety, I think, is really important. Like, I've found that that's actually been, like, having been a compassionate communication practitioner and trainer all these years, that that's been my greatest asset when it comes to marketing and sales. Um, that, that a huge percentage of people, I mean, yeah, I almost want to say almost just about everyone who hires me, has ever hired me, 
has has said that part of the reason they did it was because of how well I listened to them. Um, and uh, and and another thing about about marketing is um, like one of the things I started learning early on was the value of having one on one conversations with people um, like like you could say like a sales call or an enrollment call, which I don't I don't love the word sales or even enrollment, really, it sort of feels like we're doing something to them. But it's like having a conversation where like a lot of people just want to try and get sales from a sales page, or they think that's what you're supposed to do. Like you create a sales page online and people find that and then they they sign up. Um, but most people I find like it's much easier for me or, and I think for, for all of us to have people sign up with us when they've had a conversation with us. Um, and so for me, like some people think of sales or they teach sales in a way that's like overcoming objections and trying to get the person to buy. But I find that if I talk to someone and I have like, like you know, some structure for the way that I do it, um, but then I really emphasize a lot of listening people usually want to work with me. I mean, especially if they trust me and they desire the thing that I'm helping them get, it's like adding that piece of having the experience of knowing, wow, I feel really safe with this person. Um, usually leads people to want to hire me and I don't have to pressure them. I don't have to talk them into it. It's just, it's just letting them know, like giving them the experience of connecting with me. That's great. And, really, and really nice. Yeah, I, I love I love this little triangle of um, what how how uh, yeah why why people say yes to to our, our work, um, yeah, and uh, it's like you know another way I might think about it is that the way that you are doing marketing is like you're bringing love to people, you know, right. um, the empathic listening is an act of love, it's an act of service. Um, and so whether or not they actually hire you, you have blessed them in that way, you know? Right. And so it's a really wonderful thing to do. Um, yeah. I guess the last question I have for you and the last thing we can talk about is, um, you know, this is in regards to building trust. A lot of, a lot of times we're taught in mark in traditional marketing to like, make it sound really good You're like oh my god this has this sounds so good right oh lose lose 50 pounds in a week <laughs> that's probably doesn't sound that that right. sounds unhealthy but right. but you know it's like yeah you'll lose 50 pounds in this program or you'll make six figures uh by right. you know working with me or whatever so tell us what your what your thoughts are on on that kind of thing um yeah so i mean yeah what you're speaking of i see is like the traditional I mean, a lot of common marketing, especially online, has these very grand promises like, yeah, you're going to make six figures very quickly um, or lose weight really fast or like, you're going to lose all this weight without dieting or exercise, like something that just sounds really good. Um, but I think the thing that that I find that, that I really try to not lean into is the way that that's done, particularly around making things seem easy. Like, like, like saying, oh, it's so easy to earn six figures if you just follow my three-step formula that anyone can do it. Like a five-year-old can do this. Um, I mean, maybe a five-year-old could if they're, <laughs> if they're smart. But it's like, it's like the, the idea of saying that it's so easy, um, I think, puts people in the wrong mindset. I, I think it can be harmful especially when, when the thing that they're wanting to achieve is, is not actually that easy. And growing a six-figure business, as an example, is not, is not really that easy for most people. I mean, maybe there's those few people who kind of got lucky or they had the right resources or the right connections and it kind of just fell into their lap. But the majority of people, that's not the case. And to market in a way where you're trying to make that seem like it is so that like, oh yeah, I want to buy your course. I want it to be super easy. I want to be able to have a four hour work week um, uh, is, is, uh, and, and then make six figures doing it. Like it's, um, 
it's just not the way that that I believe is is a good way to to grow a long term sustainable business because the more that if we're marketing that way, and I mean, and and some of your listeners maybe have had this experience of like being in being in a in a program where you were marketed to that way, you're so much more likely to feel disappointed, to feel cheated, um, and I don't think that that lends people to want to to want to keep working with you more or, or referring you to other people. Like, like it, it, it may increase sales because people like the idea of it being easy. So what, what I like to do instead is to emphasize the, like in, in my, when I, when I speak with people and when I create content is to emphasize the, the value of, of taking, of going through the challenge. Of, of really stepping into, like if you're someone, if I'm talking to someone and they're considering being an entrepreneur and they haven't like fully committed to it yet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna emphasize like, yeah, this is, it's not gonna be easy. I don't have a three-step process that's gonna make it so you're six figures in two months. Like nobody does. And they're lying to you if they say that they do. And so I'm going to be honest, like, like, are you wanting to do something that is going to call on you to really step into your heroic self or your, your, um, you know, like the part of you that, that likes to embrace challenges in life, that likes to overcome obstacles. Um, and, and I think that that emphasizing these more strong parts of ourselves, um, is the way that I prefer to to market something, especially if we're if if you're a coach and you're helping people with something that's challenging, rather than trying to claim that it's easy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You know, sometimes people go, well, but like they're giving us case studies of this right. client or themselves having earned right. six figures in two For months. Sure. Yeah. You know, and I'd like I'm like. Well, even if that's true, let's just assume that they're not lying to us and that they're giving us true numbers. All right, okay, let's assume that. What we are not seeing is the years of work that built the foundation where they could send out that email and earn fifty thousand dollars in one email or whatever they they're telling right. you. Like, like yeah. it's kind of it's kind of like if someone told you, "Listen, I'm going to train you how to." It's easy to run a five minute mile or six mile, whatever, six minute mile or a five minute mile, let's say. It's easy yeah. to run a five minute mile. Yeah, look, look at me. I, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. Doesn't it look right. easy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, yeah. yeah or but, like, or like, I hope so and so do it. We only worked together two sessions and now they can do it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, like they didn't tell you that they were already running a five minute right. and 20 second mile. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah, after two sessions, now they're running a five minute mile, but they don't tell you all that where the person was already at. They don't tell you in those case studies where they were at. Or if they yeah. tell you some racks riches story, they don't tell you all the other back end uh, benefits that they had and all the privilege that they had to like put, you know, make that seem so easy. And right. so, yeah, thank you for calling this out. It's so, so important. Well, uh, I hope everyone who's been uh, listening and watching has felt um, encouraged in to, to do marketing in a more authentic, empathic way. And Jonah, you have great content that you're, you're sharing freely um, on your website, uh, as also on Instagram too. I enjoy seeing your Instagram content. So I will be sure to put the links um, in the notes. So folks, be sure to check out Jonah's Instagram for sure. His website, I also actually really like his website. It's very clean. It's very, it's actually a good example for what a, um, a minimalistic but effective website could be. So be sure to check out Jonah's website to see how you might want to emulate something like that for your own. Um, Jonah, is there anything else you want to say about what service you offer to, to people? Um, yeah, um, so... Uh, I, uh, so a couple of things. One is I, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, so you can, you can go to my site and just read a little bit more about how I do that. Um, for, for small business owners, particularly coaches, healers, and online educators, um, or in person, I, my business used to be a lot of doing in-person workshops. So I help, I can help people with that as well. Um, but I also, I have a, a workshop coming up that I'm offering. Um, it's at, like I, I was talking about having conversations 
um, like sales conversations, but really what I see is just connecting conversations with people who may be interested in working with you. And uh, so I'm putting on a workshop where I teach my whole process for how I do that and how I, how I have those, how I get into conversations with those people. Um, and it's called From Followers to Clients. And um, I, uh, you can go to my website and read more about that. Um, but I'm actually offering it for free. This is, it's a, it's a new workshop. So I won't, I don't intend to offer it for free forever, but this first round, I'm really wanting to get um, uh, people in there and to get feedback. And um, so, so yeah, so it's kind awesome. of like a beta, a beta run of, of yeah. the course. Yeah, it's really great. And I know some people are going to be watching this months or even years after we record this. So yeah. by the time you watch this, you probably have to pay for the True. workshop, but it's yeah. still going to be worth doing. It's online, yeah. of course. So anyone in yeah, the world can take Zoom. it. Mm -hmm. and um it's going to be worth it so no yeah. matter what what you know i'm sure jonah is going to charge a very reasonable price so for uh, sure and then and one thing i just want to say about it too is um it's gonna it, it's gonna be the kind like like my background is leading workshops where there's a lot of interaction with with participants and so just so you know if if you like that you're going to love this workshop if you like to spend to like to connect with other participants and get to practice and, and network and and connect then you're then you're going to really like this workshop excellent excellent yeah well thank you so much jonah for doing the work that you do and the way that you do it and um yeah i hope people will um connect with you and benefit as well thank you thanks so much thanks for having me george <laughs>